Hey everybody, Adonis Lindsay here. And Heather Lindsay. Thank you for tuning in to today's show. I'm excited about this message, Out With The Doubt. That's right, Out With The Doubt. And uh, I'm gonna be talking about a very familiar passage of scripture where Jesus, Heather, he goes in to uh, raise uh, the daughter uh, uh, of, of one of uh, the leaders of the synagogue. And his daughter is, is really, she's dead at this point. And Jesus goes in, but before he goes into the house, he kicks everybody out. And so we're going to learn a lot from that message. Uh, maybe you've read that story before, but hang on. I'm telling you, I'm going to bring out some key moments and key points that you can apply to your life. Because here's the deal. Even if Jesus had to get negative people uh, and doubt out of his uh, sphere and out of his uh, uh, sight and out of his earshot, uh, I think we've got to do that as well. And this is a great example, I believe, that Jesus set before us that if we're going to do anything great for the kingdom, if we're going to reach our destiny and reach our promise, we can't take doubt with us, okay? And that may be getting rid of some people. <laughs> Sometimes we don't like to get rid of people, but we're going to have to get rid of some mindsets and we're going to have to keep some positive influence in our lives, guys. And that's through the Word of God. So I want you to stay tuned for a message that's going to encourage you right now. Some of you right now, you've, you're watching right now, and you've been dealing with so much doubt. Uh, you're doubting yourself. You're doubting the Word of God. You've even gone so far as to doubt God. Well, did God say He was going to do this? Can God actually do this? This, this message is for you. Get ready for God to do something amazing in your life without with a doubt. Welcome to Inspiring Moments with Adonis Lindsay. I want to encourage people to go after their dreams no matter who they are. Just because you struck out this time doesn't mean you have to strike out again. There's going to be seasons in your life where all of a sudden God stirs a passion on the inside of you. God is getting ready to do something in your life. It's never too late to make your next days your best days. Hey, Adonis Lindsay here. I got an awesome message prepared for you today. It's called Out with the Doubt. That's right, kicking doubt out kicking doubt out of your mind, out of your life, out of your belief system, because so many times when we're on a journey with Jesus, with God, and we're believing for a certain thing, maybe it's a, you're believing for a breakthrough uh, in a situation or circumstance, maybe you're believing for healing, maybe you're believing for uh, a financial increase, whatever it is, there's going to be many opportunities for you to uh, entertain those thoughts of doubt that try to creep into your mind, into your situation. But after today's message, you're going to learn how to keep the doubt out because when you kick the doubt out, uh, it's going to ensure that the miracle is going to find you right where you are. So I want to go to a very familiar passage of Scripture today. We're going to be reading from Mark chapter 5, uh, starting with the 21st verse. Very familiar passage of Scripture. Uh, it says, Now when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him. And he was by the sea. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, that she may be healed, and she will live. So Jesus went with him, and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. They were all around him, but Jesus went with Jairus. And I want to talk a little bit about that right now. Wouldn't it be awesome if you were uh, in need of a miracle, and uh, maybe you got a bad report from the doctor, maybe just a financial crisis going on, maybe there's something going on in the family. Wouldn't it be awesome if you could just walk up to a, a physical Jesus and say, hey, Jesus, can you come home with me and take care of this situation? And Jesus said, yeah, I'll go with you. And so that's where Jairus says he went up to Jesus. He was in a desperate situation, okay? His daughter was at the point of dying. She wasn't dead yet, but she was at the point of dying. She was sick, and she needed a healing quick, fast, and in a hurry. And Jairus, uh, ruler of the synagogue, he went up to Jesus, explained the situation. Uh, once again, Jesus, hey, my daughter, she's about to die. I need you to come lay hands on her and heal her. And Jesus said, yes. And so you can almost picture Jesus and Jairus walking towards the home of Jairus. And then once again, I just think that'd be such an awesome thing uh, to go up to a physical Jesus and say, hey, come with me. 
to, to take care of this situation. And Jesus says, okay, yeah, let's go. And so there Jairus is. Now you can imagine where his faith level is at that moment because yours would be there too. Mine would be there as well. If you're walking with Jesus, the miracle worker, okay, the son of God, you're walking with him and you know he's, he's walking with you to uh, perform the miracle that you need. And so that's where Jairus is. And so, but all of a sudden, uh, there's a little interruption that happens, okay? The woman with the issue of blood, you've got, you probably read that story before. She was sick and, uh, for 12 long years and she needed a healing as well. And Jesus stops and, uh, and Jairus is still there, but Jesus stops to perform another miracle. Actually, where the woman comes up and she touches him uh, the hem of his garment, and she's made whole. And so Jesus is uh, saying, who touched my clothes? And finally she comes out. And, and uh, so Jesus pronounces that she's healed, she's clean. Uh, and so in the midst of that, uh, now you can almost imagine right there, Jairus, once again, he was full of faith. And all of a sudden, an interruption, because so many times, guys, we're on the way to the miracle, on the way to the gold, on the way to the promise, and these interruptions. But you know what? Hey, listen, just Jesus is still there with you. And so in the midst of that interruption, uh, some people from Jairus' home, they come up with some, with some bad news. And here it is. Uh, Mark chapter 5, verse 35. This is from the Amplified Version because I really want to break it down for you. It says, while he was still speaking, meaning Jesus, he was still talking uh, to the woman uh, uh, with the issue of blood and she was healed and made whole. While he was still speaking, there came some from the ruler's house who said to Jairus, your daughter has died. Why bother and distress the teacher any further? Wow. And you can almost imagine in that moment what began to happen. Here Jairus is walking with Jesus, full of faith, going to believe God for the healing of his daughter. And all of a sudden, some people from the house of Jairus meet them on the road and say, hey, Jairus, your daughter, she passed away. She died. She's dead. Don't even bother Jesus any longer. There's no reason to bother the master. And I want to I want to stop right there for just a moment because so many times we let things come in and distract us and take us off course, take us off our journey. Uh, they come in to try to attack our faith. And but I believe if you're walking with Jesus, here's the key, you're walking with Jesus, you're walking with the miracle worker. Uh, he's the one that's all powerful, all supreme, okay? And so you're going to have to learn to kick the doubt out, okay? Because right there, Jairus has to make a decision. He can, he can, he can stay in faith or he can be overwhelmed by the words that came out of the people's uh, mouth from his house when they say, hey, your daughter is dead, okay? It's almost be like somebody saying to you, hey, the miracle you were believing for, it's too late for you, okay? Uh, the, the promotion was given to somebody else, okay? Uh, the financial situation, hey, it's over for you, okay? There's no way you can, you can overcome this, okay? Those are some, some weighty words if we're not careful and if we try to bear them, they will weigh us down. Okay, guys, listen, you know what? I I'm telling you, listen, Jesus is not going to leave Jairus in that predicament. Okay, and we're going to take a little break here, but we'll be back in just a few moments to continue on with kicking the doubt out. <laughs> So here's the thing. Every now and then, even as a saint, you got to put something out. You got to put doubt out. Sometimes doubt show up in the form of a dude named Leonard. Sometimes doubt show up in the form of a lady named Shania. Sometimes as loving as Jesus is, Jesus turned water into wine. You know how much Jesus had to love them people to say, boop, Keep the party going. But yet, when doubt creeped in, when Jesus went to go tell him, hey, man, I'm trying to tell you, your daughter is just snoozing. Just trying to catch a little fire. And y'all gonna laugh at me? <laughs> you gonna laugh at the sun? Jesus went Martin Lawrence in an episode of Martin. Get that step in. That's how Jesus, get that step. Maybe he didn't, he didn't say it like that. That's what I heard. Get that step. When Jesus got to tell you, step, you know what he was telling the step? 
Now, so if Jesus can tell down, forget the stepping. You know what you get to do? Tell down. Forget the stepping. Now, maybe it ain't the way you say it. I just say, get out. That's all. That's the way I get out. Like the movie, get out. You say it however you need to say it. By Felicia, by doubt, you do it however you, but you look doubt in the face and say, keep it stepping, keep going, whatever your attitude is. You get to tell doubt with an attitude. It's one of the few things you get to say with attitude. Get out. Go home. Go to your mama, doubt. That's what you do. Go to your mama. Go see what your mama doing, doubt. Don't you come around here no more. Give me my bottle. You can't play on the basketball court with me no more. You can tell that. that. You tell somebody else that, that's kind of wrong. That ain't really Christ-like. You can't just tell somebody because they beat you, you know, 15 to 2. Give me mama. I don't want to play with you no more. You ain't supposed to be playing nobody 6, 8 anyway. What's wrong with you? You're supposed to be playing in college. But you can tell that. 5-1 or 7-1. Get out now. That's what you do to doubt. That's just. Adonis Lindsay Ministries is dedicated to inspiring and encouraging people from all walks of life to fulfill their God-given destiny and purpose. With over 20 years of ministry experience, he has developed a unique style of communicating in creative, illustrative, and humorous ways to his audiences. With ingenuity, he crosses all ethnic, denominational, and cultural barriers. Your support of Adonis Lindsay Ministries continues to allow us to have both a local reach and a global reach through television and online ministry presence where the focus is delivering the Word of God in practical ways so that people can understand it, apply it to their everyday lives, and see change happen. This mission is to equip everyday people to do extraordinary things through the Word of God. To see how you can partner with Adonis Lindsay Ministries, please visit AdonisLindsay.org. Hey, Adonis Lindsay here. We're back with today's message, Out With The Doubt. We're kicking doubt out, okay? We're getting it out of our mind, out of our homes, out of our lives, out of our situation, uh, because doubt has the ability to stop the miracle, to stop the promise, and we don't have any time for that, okay? So we're kicking that doubt out, and we're going to catch back up with Jairus once again. He's standing there on the road with Jesus, okay? And Jesus... Uh, just pre uh, finished performing another miracle with the woman with the issue of blood. And while Jairus is standing there, once again, somebody came from Jairus' house and said, Hey, Jairus, hey, it's too late, man. Your daughter is dead, okay? Don't bother Jesus. He's got more important things to do. Your daughter is already dead. Don't trouble the master. And right there, uh, I love it because Jesus is so awesome and he knows the weight of those words and he knows what those words can do to Jairus. He knows what those words can do uh, to the faith of Jairus. Okay? And so I love the response of Jesus. And this is where we're going to zero in on because we've got to respond this way all throughout our life, all throughout our journey when we're believing God for something and some, some, some negativity tries to creep in. Uh, Jesus gives us the best example, I believe, that we can practice and we can follow in when we're on our journey and when we encounter something that's anti the promise that we're believing God for. Once again, when they said, Jairus, your daughter is dead. I love the response of Jesus. In Mark chapter 5, verse 36, this is so awesome. You're going to love this. <laughs> Get ready. Well, once again, we're in the amplified version. Uh, it says, overhearing but ignoring what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be seized with alarm and struck with fear. Only keep on believing. Wow, that is so powerful. Here's the deal. Jesus never addressed the people that came from Jairus' house and said, hey, Jairus, your daughter is dead. Jesus never even spoke to them. He never even acknowledged them, okay? It says he overheard them deliver the news to Jairus. And Jesus looked at Jairus and said, hey, man, just keep on believing. He ignored, Jesus ignored those words of doubt and looked at Jairus and said, just keep on believing. And I believe that's a word for somebody today. Maybe you were believing God for something and somebody told you otherwise or uh, somebody sowed a seed of uh, negativity into you, words of negativity, words of doubt, and uh, then you started thinking otherwise. No, 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 no. Hear the words of Jesus. Jesus ignored 
the naysayers. He ignored the words of doubt. And you are empowered today to ignore any words of doubt that will come your way, your situation, that try to steal the blessing and steal the miracle that God has in store for you. Today, you are empowered to ignore that and keep on believing because that was the words of Jesus. He looked at Jairus after he overheard what the people said. He ignored them and told Jairus to keep on believing. Somebody received that today. Jesus is telling you, no matter what the situation is, what you've heard, what's been spoken over you, what's been spoken to you, no matter how you feel, keep on believing, okay? Keep on believing. And so as, as he looked at Jairus, and keep on believing, uh, verse 37, it says, and he permitted no one to accompany him except Peter and James and John, as they went into the house of Jairus. Now, that's a whole nother message in itself uh, because Jesus made sure he had the right people with him, okay? He had the right people, full of faith, okay? Uh, he didn't, have, he didn't, he didn't want to bring doubt into the situation. He didn't want to bring unbelief into the situation. And so he kept a few close people that were full of faith that were going to go in and believe for the miracle that he knew he was about to do. So once again, he permitted nobody to go with him except Peter, James, and John. And when he had gone inside, he said to the people, why do you make an uproar and weep? The little girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. <laughs> Here's the deal. Jesus walked into the house. This is so cool. He walks into the house. People are crying. They're wailing. They're, uh, they're beside themselves. And Jesus is like, hey, what, why y'all crying? The girl's not dead. She's just asleep. And all of a sudden, they went from crying to laughing. They begin to laugh at Jesus, okay? Uh, and so I love what he does. The, the very next thing he does, and this is the power of this message, and hopefully this is the word that you take, take hold of, because the very next thing he does, he didn't sit there and try to, to uh, have a conversation with them. He didn't try to negotiate. He didn't try to plead them to start believing. The very next thing, after they start laughing, it says, but he put them all out. <laughs> That's right. He kicked them out. He said, it's time to step. Get out, okay? He put them out of the house. And what was he doing in that moment? Was he being mean? No, he was putting doubt out, putting negativity out. He was getting rid of, getting rid of anything in the, uh, in the uh, area. He was getting rid of anything in the atmosphere that would prevent him from performing the miracle that he knew he was about to do. He had to kick the doubt out. So he told them all to get out. And, of course, you've read the story. You, you know the ending of it. And as he put all the doubt out and he took Peter, James, and John and the, and the mother and father of the little girl, he walked into her bedroom and he grabbed her by the hands and he spoke to her and she arose, okay? Told her to rise from this sleep and she arose from death. Why? Because he put all the doubt out out of that house. And I want to just encourage you today, no matter what you're going through, it could be an impossible situation, but it's possible with God. Remember, the Word of God says all things are possible to him who believes, okay? Once again, remember, Jesus told Jairus, hey, ignore what they've said. I'm ignoring it. That's Jesus. He had to ignore it, okay? Ignore the naysayers. Ignore the negativity, Ignore what you even see in your natural eyes, okay? Because we walk by faith, not by sight. Somebody catch that today because so many times we get discouraged when we look at the circumstances and we think, oh man, what is going on? But we get discouraged because we're looking with our natural eyes. Ignore what you see, ignore what you hear, and keep on believing. I'm telling you, God's got something great in store for you. Don't let doubt keep you from the promise. Don't let doubt keep you uh, from the blessing that God has in store for you. Ignore it, ignore it, and ignore it, okay? And just keep on believing. That's the words that Jesus spoke to Jairus, and I believe he's speaking that to you and me today. Ignore what you've heard and just keep on believing. Okay, guys, God bless you. Hope you enjoyed this. And I'm telling you, listen, God's got something good in store for you. And you just continue to kick that doubt out and go after the promise that God has. God bless you guys. And always remember, it's never too late 
to make your next days your best day. Wow, what a word from Adonis. I gotta share, you know, I really believe that one of the biggest ways that the enemy comes in and really takes his place in our life is through doubt. Such a timely and important message that I think we can all hear. And so, you know, that doubt just creeps in. We know that today's word has encouraged and inspired you. There's just no doubt about it. So we'd love to hear your testimonials. We love to get those and uh, just to hear what the ministry is doing and, and how it's impacting you and your life. The best way to do that is by reaching out to us at adonislindsay.org. Whether speaking at conferences, organizations, churches, or special events, his message will no doubt inspire, empower, and equip for next level living. Adonis is awesome at breaking it all down and making it relate to your life and your everyday world. If you have a dream or a passion or if you're pursuing anything, you have got to hear this man speak. He takes the Word of God and just shows us how to apply it in everyday living. There's going to be some times where you miss the ball. It doesn't mean you're out. You are still a part of the team. To have Adonis speak at your church or event, please contact us now at adonislenzi.org. Hello, I'm Danielle, and I am sitting here with Adonis right now. And so this is the time where we're going to stop and answer some questions that you, the viewers, have sent in. So let's see what they say. All right. So this first one is from Jim from Indiana. Okay. And he says, my wife and I have been married for five years, and things are going good. We have two kids now, and sometimes I feel like we hardly spend time together anymore. What can I do to make sure that we don't lose that love and feeling? <laughs> wow, Jim, that's a great question. First of all, congratulations for being married for five years and things are going good. And, and uh, I, I know that struggle of not losing that loving feeling. And so one of the things that me and my wife do is that we make sure that we keep that date night. And sometimes you just got to gotta make it happen. You got to schedule it. You know, you, I tell people all the time, I can probably go to your, your cell phone and see so many uh, important dates that you have scheduled. That, and so uh, make sure you put a date night off in there somewhere and then you schedule uh, a babysitter to come over and keep the kids. And I know sometimes that can get expensive because you have to have a babysitter, you got to pay for that. And so, but you don't have to break the bank when you go out on a date with your wife. And so uh, my wife, what she does, she'll find places, find coupons of places that we've never gone before or things that we can do. Like we just did a uh, one of those, those breakout games where they time you to get out, escape games. So we did that for the first time, had a blast with it. So make sure you schedule something at least once a month. You don't have to break the bank and just make yourself do it. Put it in your phone, in your calendar so that you make yourself go out on that date. That's good. That's a good answer. All right. So now we're going to hear from Mindy from Chicago. Okay. And she says, I think God has been nudging me to start a Bible study for some of my coworkers during their lunchtime, but she's a little bit nervous and okay. she doesn't know where to start. What okay. kind of advice would you give her? Well, Mindy, that's a great question. A lot of times people do get nervous when they feel like God is calling them to do something, especially if it involves other people and those are your coworkers. But you know what? If God is nudging you, then once again, take those next steps. Maybe begin to talk to your coworkers or send them all a little email or maybe uh, take them out for lunch and say, hey, guys, I'm thinking about doing this during our lunch break. What do you guys think about that? Get some feedback. And then once you do that, maybe uh, at, your, at, at your local church, whatever church you attend, go up and see if you can get any resources that can help you with the Bible study. Make it easy on yourself. I always tell people when you're starting out, uh, especially with a Bible study or something that you've got to teach to other people, make it easy on yourself. You may even want to start out with a, a DVD. You know, you can take your iPad and show a DVD and you guys have a discussion about it while y'all are eating lunch. Just do something, lest you do nothing. But I believe if you're feeling that nudge, take those next steps, uh, send them an email, talk to your coworkers, and then go from there. All right. So we covered ministering to your coworkers as well as keeping your marriage alive. All good questions. And if you have some questions you'd like Adonis to answer, just go to his website at adonislindsay.org, or you can just swing by on one of his social media accounts and post that question there. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hope you were inspired by today's message, Out With A Doubt. You know, Heather, you uh, I'm always blessed to have you here as my lovely co-host uh, here in the studio with me and uh, just filled with so many practical tips and wisdom. And so, Heather, we got one for you today. Just uh, I want you to give your best tip for somebody out there watching right now, your best tip uh, or just tips and uh, some advice of what people can do to overcome that negative mindset. 
I think the first thing is to evaluate where you are. Evaluate your environment. Evaluate Ooh, what huge. you're feeding your mind with. Are you feeding your mind down. with negative thoughts? Are you feeding your mind with negative TV programs? Ooh, yeah. Are you feeding your mind with negative people? Is your uh, surroundings, your sphere of influence, are they negative people? Just like Jesus did when he put the people out, you have to do that in your own life. If you have any negative people in your life, that doesn't mean that you can't be friends with them. That doesn't mean that you can't love them from a distance, but that just means that you have to take care of yourself so you can get yourself in the right mindset so you can be positive. That's, that's so key. I love what you said, Heather. You said the first thing is you have to evaluate your situation and your circumstance. Evaluate your mindset. Evaluate where you are. And then begin to look at the outward or the outward influence and the negativity that you're allowing to come in. And uh, thank you for sharing that tip, Heather. I love that you're my co-host and can, can speak wisdom and, and some great advice. And so, and guys, we also thank you as well, our viewers, for sending in testimonies. And I believe Heather has a testimony now that uh, she's going to share from one of our viewers. And don't forget that you too can send in your testimony. You can send it into Adonis via Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or to adonislindsay.org. And this tip today is from Lakeisha from All Louisiana. Right. Love watching you and your wife. You both, well, thank you. <laughs> you both are so inspiring and refreshing at the same time. Keep up the great work. Your biggest fan. Wow, Lakeisha, thank you so, so much for sending in that testimony and just encouraging us. And uh, thank you. We'd love to, to, to get those kind of testimonies because they, you know, number one, we spend so much time encouraging others. And so it feels good for somebody to, to send us that testimony to let us know that you know we're inspiring you. So thank you, Lakeisha, all the way uh, there in Louisiana. We definitely appreciate that so, so much. God bless you for sending that. Made my wife smile as <laughs> well. So thank you so much uh, for sending in that testimony. And guys, uh, once again, uh, if you've been watching our program for a while and uh, these messages are inspiring you and encouraging you and, and uh, pushing you forward in your relationship with God, please uh, do us a huge favor and pray about becoming a partner of Adonis Lindsay Ministries to help us keep inspiring moments on television, on the air. And so all you have to do is go to our website, adonislindsay.org. You can donate from there. All of your donations are tax deductible for you. And we greatly appreciate you once again uh, praying about becoming one of our partners. Also as a bonus, as a, a little, something extra added for any gift offering of $40 or more. That's right. Any gift offering of $40 or more. We're going to send you our books next and dating in black and white. That's free for you for any gift of $40 or more that you sow uh, into our ministry here to help us keep inspiring moments on television, on the air. God bless you guys. And always remember, it's never too late to make your next days your best days. Thanks so much for watching Inspiring Moments with Adonis Lindsay. We hope that you have enjoyed today's message. To contact us, please visit our website at adonislindsay.org or look for Adonis Lindsay on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Adonis Lindsay. And make sure to join us next week for Inspiring Moments with Adonis Lindsay.